Diamond Edge SB1. Diamond Edge SB1. That's right, folks. In this video, I'm going to go over a full review of the Diamond Edge SB1. So I'm Sean McVay with Sean's Outdoor Adventures, and as I said, I'm going to do a review on the Diamond Edge SB1. Now, I just recently did an extensive review on the Bear Cruiser G2, and the next bow I'm going to do after this is the Diamond Infinite Edge Pro. When I'm all finished, I'm going to make another video that's going to compare them all, and I'm going to tell you which one I think is the best bow uh, out of those three for someone who's looking to buy one. So I'm taking the quiver out of the package and I can see that the peep sight is also sneaking in down there. You gotta be careful of that. Don't lose your peep sight. The way the quiver clips in is you put the little disc in the top part and then you swing the bottom in and you're good to go. I have a bow press, so I will put this peep sight, I'd be able to put the peep sight in when using my bow press. And I will see if this bow can be pressed with the Bowmaster bow press, which is a fairly inexpensive bow press that you can purchase. Anyway, I'm going to go over this bow extensively, um, just checking, seeing what the cam lean looks like right out of the box. Very little to no cam lean right out of the box. I'm going to go shoot this through paper and see what it does right out of the box. What can you expect if you buy something like this and how close to it is it to being tuned right when you get it? Let's go see. Here's how I'm going to do this. Straight out of the box, I don't even know what draw weight it's set at. Let's see if it says it on this card. Nope. No, I don't know what it's set up. I can tell that it's backed out quite a distance here. And it says that it's set at 28 inch draw length on the card here. But it's actually 26 inch draw length on the mods. So there's a little sticker on the bow that says 28 inch. So there's a discrepancy there. This is just going right out of the box anyway. I'm going to take a shot through the paper, I've just set it up, and then I'm gonna crank it to peak weight and shoot it again, just to see if there's any difference. I'm gonna shoot a bare shaft, and um, this is the ultimate test. I mean, if everything's right on, the shaft is gonna leave a little hole. If it's off, there's gonna be some kind of tail in one way or another. So, let's see what, what happens here. There's a, uh, I'm gonna to have to set the length on that real quick. All right, let's see. I can tell it's set real light. And I got a right tear. The last bow I did, the Bear Cruiser G2, shot the same arrow right out of the box. And it was perfect bullet hole right here, right through my piece of steak. Got a right tear. Let's crank it up to peak weight and see if anything changes. All right, before I take my next shot through paper, I just cranked it all the way up. So the um, draw weight came in at 70.97 pounds, so about 71 pounds of peak weight, and that shortened the draw length to 25 and 7 eighths. So it was 26 and a quarter at 45 pounds, but when you tighten it way up to 70, it does impact the draw length. Let's shoot this through paper here and see what kind of tear I get. So this is going to be my second shot ever out of this bow. Still uh, at the setting of right around 26 inch draw. Which is a little awkward for me because it's so short. And another super huge right tear, even more so. Second shot was the lower one. Okay, this is the uh, cam with the draw mod on there. It adjusts in half inch increments, all with, with the same mod, which is very nice. And it's just a matter of loosening three screws or taking them out and rotating the cam to line up the number draw length you want with this little slash mark right here. I'm gonna be testing this in one inch increments today because the Bear Cruiser G2 that I am gonna ultimately compare this bow to, I did in one inch increments. So now I'm going to move it to the 30 inch draw length and tune it. Here's an observation. The cam module screws do have Loctite on them. Okay, the cam timing out of the box. Now that I'm at 30 inch draw is close, but just not quite perfect. 
there's just a little gap on this side right there is a gap but a half of a turn or half a twist to the cable is probably going to be too much as far as getting it perfect so this shows my peak weight is 70.15 and the draw length is 29 and a half on the button but the draw mods are that's their 30 inch draw length setting and just so if you look right there where that little tick mark is on the cam that's 30 inch so it's not actually accurate if you're looking to shoot 30 inch draw this only actually is 29 and a half okay so right out of the box you can see that the arrow rest is way off the tip of the arrow is pointing to your right in this image um, I'm going to put the bow in the bow vise and make an adjustment. I'll show you another way you can gauge this as well. Not sure how well this will turn up on video, but this little piece of paper is 13 16 inch wide. It's what I use to set the center shot on my Matthews that I'm currently using, which by the way, I'm giving one away later in the year. But um, as I hold this up against there, it gives me an idea. In the back, the corner of this is over the arrow. In the front, the corner of it is almost hanging over. And it's just another indication that the front end of this arrow needs to come toward me, which is to your left. So um, these are just little things you can do. You can use a ruler to measure the front of the riser to the arrow and do that. Well, do that in the front and in the back, and the measurement should be the same. To adjust this, I'm going to loosen this screw down here for the arrow wrist and I'm going to slide it out. I'm going to recheck it. It's a lot closer but still might need to come just a hair hair more. And this 13 16 paper is now lining up nicely down the center of the shaft which was what I was looking for. You can make one of these very easily by just measuring across a piece of paper and making marks 13 16 inch and then draw a line and cutting it. Okay, I'm tightening it back up. Let me just try shooting this through paper and see what happens. Now I want to, um, I usually just squat down because I want to shoot with the arrow going through as level as I can into the paper. I still have a little bit of a right tear, but it's much less. Let's take a look at that. That top one right there is the most recent. All right, I've moved the rest a little bit more. I did take a shot with a much stiffer spined arrow just to test it in, a, in the interim, and it gave the same exact tear. So it's definitely not due to spine. It's just a matter of getting this rest set in the correct location. It's a little bit closer. That one was just above the number three there. Alright, when you are adjusting the right to left on your rest, here's a little tip for you. There's little line markings and an arrow to help you see how far you're moving. But in order to move in very small increments, which is what you want to do, I take the side of my little wrench set here and I tap on it just gently and I just watch it move just a little bit, stop, tighten it back up. You want to do this in small increments because even a sixteenth of an inch can make a big difference when you're tuning for center shot. I'm going to have to change out my paper here soon. Now I'm going to squat lower here because I want to go into the paper horizontally and again I'm closer. Um, really close now actually but still a little bit I'm gonna adjust it a little bit more and then we're gonna start doing some speed testing just a tiny bit more I'll show you this one right here right in the center of that meat right there right there very close but I do notice that the um, string stopper here is 
set out a little too far. So it's just a matter of loosening this screw right here and sliding it in. So I'm going to do that real quick. Typically you want it just at resting position, just barely coming in contact. And um, it was probably set uh, at the draw weight that the bow came at. And as you lower the draw weight, the, the limbs come down and that actually lets the cams come out a little bit and that kind of increases your brace height, moves the string away from the riser basically, so the string stopper was out farther. So keep an eye on that. If you're changing the draw length, just take a look at your string stopper here, the suppressant, and uh, make sure that it's optimal for your setup. Okay, one drawback to this design of bow is that it doesn't have a yoke system. And the reason why that can be a drawback is I've been fine tuning the rest. Let's say I have it center shot though, the correct spine arrow, and I'm still getting poor arrow flight. Or let's say you're shooting a fixed, fixed blade broadhead and it's flying way different than your field point. It could have to do with needing to shim the cams one way or the other. When you have a yoke system, you can just add or remove twist to the yoke to uh, help adjust for cam lean. With this type, you gotta shim the cam, and that just changes the load that's, that's taking place over here. So now let's go ahead and take a couple shots through the chronograph. 70 pounds, 350 grain arrow. It's supposed to be 30 inch draw, but it's actually measuring 29 and a half. But let's see what it comes in at. 314. 315, 314. Okay, this is the 29 inch, 29 inch draw length setting. It measured 28 and 5 eighths. Let's see what it does speed wise. 304, 303, 303. Let's do it. This time I'm ready for the very awkward feel of the draw cycle. <laughs> Not that there's much of one. 114. Oof. Oof. Just sounds awful. You should not shoot the bow at this draw mod setting. Okay, now that I've gotten through all that, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn the limb bolts one full turn and check the draw weight to see how much draw weight comes out per turn. And in order to do that, I'm gonna do the same thing I did in my last video. I like to draw a vertical line through the limb bolt and onto the limb pocket, and then another half one, just to help me know which side is up. Before I do that though, I wanna mention the scripture passage for this video. It's Matthew chapter six, verses 25 through 34. Matthew chapter six, verse 35 to 25 through 34, sorry. Um, and if you're not familiar with that, I'm giving away a bow on December the 1st. It, if you want a, a Diamond Edge SB1, you can pick that, but the other options are the Bear Cruiser G2, the Diamond Infinite Edge Pro, or the Matthews Vertex or Matthews Traverse. The winner picks. So the way that you win is I'm gonna call somebody live in, who's, who registers to be in the drawing and the registration will take place in the month of November so you got to stay tuned for that. Um, registration will be in November I will call the person live and say hey what was the scripture passage from this particular video like the Diamond Edge SB1 review what was the scripture passage boom that's that easy so now let me go ahead and draw my lines on here you just usually what I do is I take a straight edge any type will work and I have my handy dandy silver sharpie that I keep on my archery workbench here and I will draw that line right on here and I'll do the same for the top the other limb bolt alright now my reason for doing like two dots at the top is if you do a half a turn and somebody distracts you or you get called away it's it's easier to say okay these that extra line doesn't line up so I know I gotta do another half turn so let me get my wrench here. The peak weight 
before, before turning anything has been coming in at 70 point, what is it, 70 point six pounds. So let's see what happens when we take one full turn off. Limb bolts turn nicely. You want to make sure that it's seated in there well because you don't want to risk stripping the limb bolt. I also do one turn at a time from one end to the next. So you turn one here and one here. You never want to turn a whole bunch on one and then a whole bunch on the other. You always do one at a time. At max you do two, but I typically just make it a habit to do one. That way I'm always keeping everything. I'm not forgetting, oh wait, how many did I turn or whatever. All right, before I give you my final observations with the bow, pros, cons, observations, things like that, I wanna just kinda of briefly talk about the data I accumulated here. And um, I'm gonna have a web page set up on my website that's gonna detail this all out in writing. And you can go on there and you can copy this, save it to your computer if you wanna stare at it some more. But I just wanna point out a couple things that I have here. So at the top, I have the manufacturer's specs just going across here. All of the shots that I took um, with, with a 350 grain arrow and I wanted to basically compare my original intention was to shoot 350 grain arrow at every draw length to see you know what happened to the bow's speed as we changed the draw length what I discovered the more I started to play with this bow as well as some of the others that I'm doing the videos on like the Bear Cruiser G2 is that as you change draw length, you also change draw weight. So I was no longer shooting five grains per pound. I still, for comparison's sake though, used the same arrow throughout the whole test. So as we look at my little chart here, the very first column is the peak weight in pounds. That means this is what the, the draw weight was for that given draw length. So I'll just show you the bottom line here when I went to the 15 inch draw length, the, the absolute peak weight was 40.8 pounds. Now this uh, actually plays into your decision as far as what you're looking for, what you're expecting to do. If your draw length is 22 inches, let's say, the maximum weight you're going to get with this bow is... So I think it's fine because I don't think anybody with that short of a draw length very often is not going to be pulling that much weight anyway. So this particular bow though, I'm gonna compare all the bows in a future video. This bow sustained well for draw weight as you decreased in draw length. Now next to that is the actual draw length. So the first column here is MF is manufacturer's draw length in inches. So that's what they rate it as. Mine is what did it measure draw length wise at peak weight? So it came in at exactly 29 and a half inch draw length at peak weight, which was 70.5 pounds. I shot three times, which is what shot one, two, and three is depicted here. And then the average of those three was 314 feet per second, which is right at the advertised speed of 315. I mean, one foot per second, that is given in a, you know, there's always little variances and stuff. So it was right at the advertised speed. Very nice to see. You can go onto my website and, or just pause the video and look at this whole chart a little more thoroughly if you want to. Now another piece of information that is um, helpful I think to people is what's the draw weight going to be every time I turn the limb bolt one full turn? So the peak weight was 70.5 pounds, you know, obviously with no turns. And I mentioned the, the draw length that I had at that time which was 29 and a half inches, the manufacturer's advertised draw length is 30 inches, all the way in the right hand corner. So I had it at the 30 inch draw setting and we're gonna watch what happens to the draw length as we decrease the draw weight. So we're turn, loosening the limb bolts. So you can look at this chart. When I, I loosened it one full turn, it dropped the weight to 66.3 pounds. So you're looking at about a four pound difference with one full turn. And the draw length remained pretty much the same. Drawing it, backing it down two full turns. So I just added an additional full loosening turn. It dropped it to 62.5 pounds. And still we were at 29 and a half ish draw length. 
Three full turns was 59.1, still right around 29 and a half. Then, as we got below that, once I got the four full turns out, which dropped it to 55.7 pounds, it stretched out a little bit to 29 and 5 eighths. Another full turn, you'll see it dropped it to 52.2 pounds, but then it also extended the draw length to 29 and 3 quarters. And as you look down the chart, it continues to creep out. My point is, if you're a 30 inch draw length and you're planning to shoot more than, you know, 45 pounds, you're not going to be quite close to the 30 inch draw length. I mean, 29 and 7 eighths at, at 45 pounds is closer, but you just need to realize that when you're making a decision. So if you're somebody with a true 30 inch draw length and you're planning to shoot at 70 pounds, this might not be the best selection for you because you're, you're going to be a half inch short at draw length. Now some people say, oh, put a bigger or a bigger D loop on. Well, I, I guess you can. I'm not a fan of that myself. I'd rather have a bow that fits me. But aside from that, let me go ahead over to my uh, whiteboard here and talk about some of the pros and cons and final observations with the Diamond Edge SB1. All right, before I go over the pros and cons real quick, I just want to mention a few things that would be helpful to have on hand, and I will provide some Amazon links for these in the description section below the video. This is a D-loop uh, pair of pliers. If you're going to be owning a compound bow, this is something that would be good to have because there's going to be situations where you might need to move the D-loop or modify it, put a new one on. I do have a video on how to tie one on, things like that. Um, but a D-loop pliers, I think I paid about $17 to $20 for this, but this most likely is going to last me the rest of my life. Not a bad investment for all the years of use I'm going to get out of it. Also, I use a silver sharpie a lot to mark the bow for a lot of different things, moving the peep sight, marking where it should be. And once you get your peep sight set, I usually put a little mark on the sides of the strings, right on the side of the peep sight. And that way you can see if it ever gets to, if something causes it to get to slide or not, move out of place. Well, now you, you have your markings there. You can move it back into place and do a better job tying in the peep sight. Allen wrench or hex set, whatever you prefer to call it. I like having this on hand, super handy. There's always times I'm using this when I'm adjusting the, the sight, uh, the rest, anything. I mean, it comes in super handy to have one of these on hand. I really like these, uh, the little levels. You hold this against the string and you clip that onto the arrow and it helps you make sure that your, your arrow is square and um, that it's you know, you're going to have good vertical arrow flight coming off the bow. It helps get you close and then you can do a little fine tuning while you're paper tuning if you need to. These are very inexpensive. I think I got these for around $12. Again, I've had these many years. Most likely, unless my kids break them, they're going to last me many, many more years. A worthy investment for such a little bit of money. Last but not least, it's definitely good to have some bowstring wax on hand. I wax your bowstring regularly. I have a little piece of leather. It's actually sitting on my desk right over there. I put the wax on and then I use the leather to run it over the wax real fast and it heats it up and melts it into the string. I do have a video on that as well. The links again will be in the description section for those of you who are interested in more information on these things. Okay, so some of the pros of this bow, let's go over it. First of all, this is a very nice bow and a complete package. What I mean is the finish is nice, great camo. You have a lot of camo patterns to select from. I could have even listed that, but I'll just mention that. Lots of uh, options there. You have a stabilizer. Um, I mean, there is a stabilizer on there. It may help a little with uh, vibration and noise, but it's very light, so it's not gonna help necessarily with balancing the bow and aiming but it still has one nonetheless. This quiver, I actually really like this quiver. I've been using this same one on my bow for years and I dropped it on the floor right there. Um, it's very light quiver and it has two capture points so it holds the arrows in pretty well. So I like the lightness of it. You do have to just be careful. There's a foam piece in the head. Depending on the type of broadhead you use, if they're expandable, you'll probably want to take a, a knife and cut slots in the foam before pushing your expandable broadhead in there because if you just try to push it in there it'll cause the broadhead to open 
and that could ruin your little loop or clamp that holds the blades in place and you'll have to replace those. So just keep an eye out on that. But other than that, this is a very nice quiver. It's adjustable too. I have it currently pushed all the way up because I have long arrows and I usually have to do that. Um, also, if like I, it's not tightened right now, so I can just slide it down. If you have it like this, depending on the style of arrow rest you, you use, if you switch to like a drop away, you might have to set this above the drop away so it's not interfering with the components there. To tighten this, it's simply a matter of tightening these screws here and then it won't be able to slide like that. This actually will slide as well, this capture point, so if you need to move it up or down to fit your arrows the best, you can. It has a little thing to hang the quiver. If you like to take your quiver off when you, if you're a hunter and you get to your spot, you can hang that on something. So that's a nice little feature on the quiver. The arrow rest has both vertical and horizontal adjustments, which is very nice to have. So you don't have to move your D loop all the time just to make adjustments. And you can make um, vertical adjustments with the arrow rest itself. It is a, a metal construction, it seems as opposed to plastic, so that's nice to see. It's more durable. Uh, the D-loop, I'm trying to slide it, it's not sliding, so it comes well secured. I'm gonna talk about um, other bows that I've taken out of the box and you've been able to just slide the D-loop right on down. It does have a sling, so you can put your hand in there, and the nice thing about a sling is you don't wanna grip the bow, you wanna just have your hand relax there and when the bow goes off, you just let it go. You don't try to grab it, and that helps you be a little more accurate in your shooting, so you keep that hand relaxed. So having the bow sling there in the package is nice. So you can train yourself to keep a relaxed hand, not trying to grip the bow. You'll be a better shooter in the long run. It does have a three pin sight. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the sight in the con section, but the, as far as pros is you get a sight with the bow, and um, it's a, you know, usable fiber optic sight with a level in it. It does have a string dampener, a string suppressant, like, which helps quiet a bow and also helps absorb vibration. There are speed knocks on there that helps with the speed. Another thing that I really liked about this, very easy to change the draw length of this bow. It's a matter of loosening three screws, popping it up, rotating it, putting it down in place, tightening them up. It also changes in half inch increments. I'm gonna add that to the list here. I've got a little list I started to write and then I started to record. Um, so it's very easy to adjust the draw length and the draw weight. The limb bolts turn pretty easily once you get the first one started. Um, and uh, the draw length mod screws have Loctite on them. So when I took them out, you could see the blue Loctite on there. That helps hold them in place, which is important. You don't want those things rattling loose in the long run. So they have Loctite on them, which is great. The bow also meets the advertised speed expectations. We were shooting 314 feet per second, advertised 315. I mean, one foot per second is totally allowable as far as, I mean, even the slightest variance could cause a one foot per second distant difference. Um, so they're meeting expectations there as far as how fast the bow is. Now that's at 70 pounds and it's even advertised as 30 inch draw, but you're actually only shooting 29 and a half inch draw. So if it was an authentic 30 inch draw, that speed would be even higher than that. So they're meeting the expectation there. Nice smooth handle. It's a very smooth handle, feels comfortable in your hand. The finish is very smooth. It, it's a nice bow. So let's take a look at a few of the cons. All right, here we go with some cons. Out of the box, it is not tuned. You gotta, have, you gotta be ready to tune. You can't just take it out and start shooting and expect things to go well. You gotta, you're gonna have to tune it out of the box. Now, I shot an arrow without fletching on it through it and discovered that the arrow rest was way off. You really wanna check that before you start shooting because if you have a fletched arrow and you shoot it through and it's way off, it's gonna mess up your fletching very possibly and then you're gonna to have to pay or you're gonna to have to just redo the fletching on the arrow. Either do it yourself or pay someone to do it. Lacking instruction in the box. There's a few things noted in a pamphlet in the box but they basically tell you to go online for everything. If you're in a situation where you don't have internet and you're trying to work and get this bow going, you're out of luck. You're gonna to have to go and find some internet access to watch videos and everything to set the bow up. Doesn't meet the advertised draw length at the peak draw weight. So at peak draw weight, you're at 29 and a half inch draw. 
Uh, that's uh, disappointing for me. If you're somebody with a 30 inch draw, I would say look at a different bow. I'm about to do a review on a Diamond Infinite Edge, Infinite Edge Pro, which goes a little longer in draw length. Uh, they also just came out with a new one. I think it's called something 320 or something like that. Um, it goes an inch longer in draw length, at least advertised. I'll have to get my hands on that and test it out as well at some point, uh, God willing. So, uh, but that's a little bit of a drawback. Another is the peep sight is not installed and you can't just put a peep sight in the string. You need a bow press in order to put a peep sight in. So if you don't have a bow press or access to one, you're not even gonna be able to put that peep sight in yourself. And then that means, let's say you order this, it gets shipped to your house, you gotta wait till you can go to a bow shop and have them put it in for you before you can even shoot the bow with a peep sight to sight it in. And related to that, the Bowmaster bow press, which is a fairly inexpensive bow press, it's actually what I started off with. It hooks onto the ends of the bow and you crank this thing and it pulls the limbs together and um, lets you work on the bow. That will not work on this bow. Um, you know, let me throw a, a pro in there that I forgot to mention is, it does have these little pieces in the limb pocket here. This helps strengthen the limb. This being a solid limb bow, this is a weak point on a solid limb bow where they have cracked and had problems in the past like solid limb bows have. So having this little metal bracket here is helpful to prevent cracking. However, you do need to keep an eye on this to make sure it doesn't get loose. I have had a fan write to me saying that this came loose and when the bow went off, it, it, it messed up the cam and messed everything up. So he had to uh, get this all replaced. Um, Diamond's usually pretty good about um, customer service, so they'll typically help people out in those situations. But I can't say with absolute certainty that they will. But anyway, keep an eye on that. Make sure it stays tight. So in the site, let's take a look at that. The fiber optics, there are fiber optics in the site but there, it's a little bit lacking. So if you look at the fiber optics, they come around the back of the sight pins and then a little bit right here. The more fiber optic you have, the more light they can grab and the brighter your pins will be. And um, there's not much here. If you're in a ground blind and you know this is all dark in here and the light's out there, it's not gonna be capturing light. You're not gonna be able to see well at all. There is no sight light in here. You'll have to buy one if you wanna put a light in there. Let me grab my bow just to give you a quick comparison with fiber optics. So uh, this is a fairly expensive uh, site. I mean, this site alone was $250. But there's other models that have similar constructions that you can look at. But this one, the fiber optics are wrapped around the front. I always look for that in a site. And there's several feet of fiber optics. So even in low light situations, it looks like there is a light on. And there is a, a sight light right here that you can turn on. But just as it is, this grabs a lot of light and the pins are bright. So if I'm on a ground blind and I go to take a shot, the light is coming in the window of the ground blind and it's typically being caught by the fiber optics here and what I'm seeing is lit up pretty nicely. So um, that would be an example of a little bit better fiber optic um, construction than what is provided on that site. This is also all aluminum construction whereas the site on here is all plastic which is not gonna hold up as well in rugged hunting situations especially. This is a tool free uh, adjustability so I just turn this little knob here and then I turn this knob and it'll move the sight back and forth for sighting in. Everything's tool free with all this here on the sight that comes with the diamond it's not tool free so you have to loosen up uh, an allen wrench or hex wrench uh, screw and then slide it. Now the challenge with that is if you're getting close to sighting it in and you loosen it up and you try to move it and it's not moving and all of a sudden it, it goes. Well, maybe you went way past where you needed to and you got to start all over. Same with the uh, pin adjustments over here. It's a little Allen wrench screw and moving them up and down can be challenging. I've done it many years. You can do it. It just takes a lot longer and it's a little bit more frustrating to get a site like that sighted in. So those are pros and cons of the Diamond Edge SB1, but I'm going to give you my personal opinion of this bow. Uh, this is one of my favorite bows for people who are getting started. I mean, it's, it's sure it's got some cons, but overall, I, I really like the bow. And I bought this, one of my kids is going to end up shooting this bow. This is going to be that bow that they're going to use. 
probably for the next 10 years. This is one of the things that's nice about these bows is you can adjust the draw length so long. Actually, now that I'm thinking about the draw length, I have another con here that I just mentioned is that the low end of the draw length range, it's basically useless. I mean, when I went to shoot it uh, for the speed ratings, it was so awkward, the draw cycle, that it, it was not good. I mean, I'm sure I was at the peak weight. You could always back the weight off and it maybe wouldn't be as bad, but really, although it goes to a 15 inch draw length, I would say 19 inch is where you're actually gonna have uh, a real sense of something decent for a draw length cycle or a draw cycle. So uh, the, the lower end of the draw length range is a little clunky, not uh, my preference at all. But aside from that, I mean, the, the bow is, I mean, my children, by the time they really get shooting, they're probably already gonna be at that 19 inch draw length or even more. And like I said, this is gonna last a long time. They're a nice investment. Um, and I have no problem putting this in my child's hand and feeling like my kid's got a good bow and they could even take this hunting. So I do like this bow and I do recommend it to people. If someone was to say, Sean, what's the first thing you would upgrade when you get to that point? The first thing I would upgrade is the sight. That's, that's my personal opinion. Everything else you can run with for a long time. This sight is a little lacking. It does have a level in it, which is nice, but there's no level adjustment. So if for whatever reason, it's not actually plumb when you're holding the bow vertically, you have no way of adjusting for that. My, my sight over here has second and third axis adjustments. So not only can you adjust the level when you're holding the bow vertically, but if I'm shooting out of a tree stand and I'm aiming down, that changes everything. And that's a third axis adjustment. You can actually adjust for that as well with this sight. So thank you so much for tuning in. I am Sean McVeigh with Sean's Outdoor Adventures. Don't forget to follow my videos so you can win the compound bow uh, in December. I'm also giving away a tree stand. I'm also giving away a broadhead sharpener. And who knows, maybe between now and then there'll be some other prizes that will get added into the mix. But I'd love for you to follow the videos and get in for a chance to win. Registration for that will be in the month of November. So don't email me now. I've actually had people emailing me even though I keep asking people not to. Please do not email me now saying, hey, I want to be in the drawing. I'm going to have a sign up, a registration on my website in the month of November. So thank you again for watching my videos. If you like my videos, please help me grow physically click the share button, copy a link, and send it in an email. Email to a couple people. Say a little prayer. Holy Spirit, is there anybody I know that would benefit from Sean's videos? And if somebody pops to mind, please go ahead and send it to them. And not just in this instance, but in your whole day. Say a little prayer throughout the day. Holy Spirit, guide me in this situation, or what should I do in that situation? And you never know. Little ideas may pop in your mind, and you might feel closer to God through it all. Again, thanks for tuning in. Until next time, take care and God bless.